Approaching the scene of the disaster early this morning, a thick column of smoke was rising thousands of feet into the air above the blazing platform. The oil and gas escaping from the crippled rig were still burning fiercely. A 15-mile exclusion zone has been imposed around the site. Inside that zone, a string of ships combed the area looking for any survivors. The whole superstructure of the platform has collapsed in a tangle of molten metal. A rescue boat that got too close was engulfed in the flames. One survivor was picked out of the sea more than a mile and a half away from the burning platform, but the chances of the rescue services finding anyone else alive are getting more remote with each hour that passes. If any men who jump from the rig are still in the water, it's unlikely that they could survive such a long period of immersion. I was on the 20-foot level and there was a massive explosion, great balls of flame. So I, I jumped into the sea because the uh, rescue boat moved away, otherwise it would have been burnt with all the people. From about 25 miles away, uh, we, we could see the flames and uh, obviously as we got closer, I appreciated the magnitude. Um, the, fl the flames really were huge and uh, quite remarkable. What about the heat? The heat obviously uh, it wasn't until we got a lot closer, but uh, you could feel the heat quite, quite clearly. In fact, uncomfortably clearly. Oh. Basically, they had very little notice about it. The explosion happened, and they weren't able to launch any of their escape vessels or, or life rafts, and were committed really to, uh, to escaping from a rig by simply leaping from some 200 feet into the water. The rescue services coordinated from this control room have been working around the clock. But they now fear only bodies will be recovered from the water. The sheer scale of the disaster became apparent to them when the first helicopters carrying the injured began landing at Aberdeen's Royal Infirmary. Some were just suffering from shock and were able to walk from the helicopters. Others arrived on stretchers and were taken straight into intensive care. At first light, the fleet of helicopters were still bringing in the injured. The ordeal of the disaster had completely numbed them. The worst cases were the burn victims caught in the intense heat of the explosion. The anguish of the relatives crowded into the hospital was clear as they waited desperately for news of those posted as missing. Nurses battled throughout the day to bring relief to the survivors, most of them suffering from horrific burns. Eleven of the most seriously injured will undergo skin graft operations in the next 24 hours. Some of the patients, though, were well enough to be able to talk about their experiences on the platform. Uh, within about five minutes, you know, the, the inferno and the smoke was so much that the people, they tried all the exit doors from the accommodation to get out onto the rig and get into the water or the boats or whatever. But, you know, they were beaten back at every, at every opportunity. You know, so eventually, myself, about a dozen guys, uh, tried a place that we got out that had previously been blocked. You know, we smoke. The decision was made for me, it was roasting. You know, it was fry or jump, so it was jump. A specialist team of plastic surgeons was flown in. They worked with the victims of the Bradford fire and know the problems ahead. If the grafts take, they'll at least be healed uh, in, within two weeks. They will then have um, many months of rehabilitation. Um, the problem with burns is it's a slowly evolving situation and um, the problem, the psychological problems come later, I think. Distraught relatives and friends left the hospital when it became clear that no more survivors were being brought in. The last man taken alive from the scene arrived here just before nine o'clock this morning. They went home to share their grief in private. Tonight, more than 24 hours after the first explosions ripped through the Piper Alpha platform, the fierce flames have been damped down. The melancholy search for the bodies is still going on, and a pall of black smoke still hangs over the platform, marking the site of the world's worst ever oil field disaster. David Chater, News at 10, in the North Sea. The fire on board the Piper Alpha platform has broken out again. These pictures were taken at the scene of the disaster just two hours ago. Half of the platform has been completely destroyed by the explosion. Air Sea Rescue helicopters are still inside the exclusion zone, but there's now little hope of finding any survivors. The task is now one of finding bodies. A fleet of NATO ships is still on station, but the operation is expected to be scaled down tomorrow. 
The water around the rig is littered with wreckage. The tattered remains of the personal effects of the people on board the rig have been carefully collected. A team of investigators is expected to be flown out to the scene tomorrow. David Chater, News at 10 in the North Sea.